Turn your Bible to Psalm 150. Psalm 150. Psalm 150. Is anybody feeling great this morning? Yes, Psalm 150. You will celebrate many Christmas on the earth. Yes. You will not go before your time. Yes. Psalm 150. If anybody is seated beside you, just help me to encourage him or her. Stand for the reading of God's word. Thank you, my ladies. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. From the back everywhere, could you please stand? We stand for the introductory text of God's word in this house. Let all things break the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise God in the sanctuary. What, which month are we in? Hallelujah. By the way, that was powerful from Joshua. But next announcement, don't do broken again. <laughs> because it's a global church. But if you are missing me, it will be fine. Praise the Lord, praise God in the sanctuary. But that was a good concept. Praise the Lord, praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Pastor Robert, you want to use this? Okay. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Will you go ahead and praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh, you guys are powerful students. <laughs> Will you go ahead and praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Father, we are caught up in the realities of your life. And we are thankful that we are privileged to be partakers of your life. I'm asking as I share the word in Thanksgiving this morning. Let there be a reactivation of your life. When the children came presenting and they were asking us before they came on stage, we are looking for the bone king. I told one of them, it's inside of me. We are asking after tonight, I mean this morning rather, let Jesus that the word means be revealed in us. Amen. Through us Amen. to the word that they may see and receive his life. Amen. Say greater Amen. Amen. Please kindly take your seat. We are going to have a repeat of what is going on here this evening at our lucky church. It's going to be explosive. So after the service, if you know anybody, you know, in VGC, Aja, Ibrahim Adesoya, Shogote, Do, and the entire environs, put a call through to them that they need to be part of the evidence church this evening. It's going to be very explosive in our evening of songs and carols celebrating the life of Jesus. Now, reading from Psalm 150, we understand the plagues of embassy on giving God glory. The word hallelujah means praise God. In other words, exalting and exclaiming and exalting and expressing God in worship. And ladies and gentlemen, you must understand that God has formed us for his glory. And if God has formed you and I for his glory, it is our duty on a consistent basis to be a thanks giver. Can I hear thanks giver? Yeah. To be a thanks giver. We thank him in the morning, we thank him at noon, and we thank him at night. As Psalm 150, I lighted onto rocks, few things, among many things, where we must thank God. You are alive this morning because God kept you. You can clap, you can sing, you can sit, and you can whatever it is that you are doing right now because the hand of the Lord is so strong upon your life. The Bible says, let all things, let all things, let all things. The word all things means all things. Can I hear all things? Hallelujah. Let all things shout hallelujah. Let all things praise the Lord. Let your car praise God. Let your house praise God. Are we in the building? Let your speakers praise the Lord. Let your electronics praise the Lord. Let your business, let your career, let your project stay with me, praise the Lord. Everything. That is the reason why God is saying, let everything praise the Lord. Apart from the fact that you can only work with God and sustain the frequency of your work with him from the place of gratitude, it is also a way of honor. It's a way of acknowledgement. Is it carefully? You can't give honor to whom you have not acknowledged. And so acknowledgement helps us not in a little way to be a thanksgiver. So when we acknowledge what the Lord has done or who the Lord is, 
And what the Lord has done, my daughter, it gives us the privilege to blow or burst in thanksgiving. So the Bible is saying, let all things praise the Lord because all things are products of God. All things. Oh, God, stay with me, people of God. All things are God's product. Your life is God's product. I mean, in the act of the apostles, it was well put, and well put together. Chapter 20, he said, it is in him we walk, we move, and have what? Our being. And the Bible helps us, if you read downward, to begin to expatiate and I lied. Talking about the firmament, talking about the, everybody in the sanctuary, talking about the mighty acts of God, uh, and talking about his excellent greatness, talking about the fact that uh, we must not be gentle about it. He says, do it yourself, and if you need to employ equipment, go ahead and employ equipment. That is why in the evidence church, we don't joke with equipment. Somebody was asking me in our lecture, he said, Pastor Paul, I want to buy stuff for church. Tell me, I was so reluctant. I was reluctant because I am drawing from the place of understanding. It's a new church. We're just trying to gather people. I can't tell you because if I tell you, I need to be sure it's what we can do. Because if I tell you, I go, the Bible employed us to thank him with flutes and trumpets. So if you have to buy one trumpet for one million there. He said, Pastor, we'll start from somewhere. I understand. I understand. Do you know why some of us can afford to buy a car for 7 million, 10 million, 15 million? Build a house, furnish it with all sorts. And you cannot afford to create 50,000 naira to invest on equipment because we do not have enough sufficient revelation that informs us that employing equipment is part of your praise expression. He said, Praise God with what? I thought Mika is preaching with me with flutes, with trumpets. So when you see us going all the way for carol service or for major stuff, and involving equipment, it is not show. It is part of our revelation. Say, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and up. Oh, I love to see when the stage is so full. I'm going somewhere this morning. Stay with me. I love to see when the stage is so full. I love to look at the equipment stand. When it is so full, con- con- I mean, sophisticated, comprehensively detailed. <laughs> And you see them in numbers, and you see them. I'm, I'm telling you, well coordinated, and they are, and they put it together. Oh my God, the harmony, the coordination, the Serona's voice is well aligned and coordinated, and all being put together to celebrate Jesus, to celebrate God. Why? Because of who Jesus is, because of who God is. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is not out of place for us to continuously praise the Lord. Particularly in a season like this that reminds us, Eric, about his birth. Stop the argument. Somebody was arguing, said, tell me if it is true that Jesus was born on the 25th day. I said, you're a shallow believer. You don't have substance. I don't waste my time for that kind of theological debate. If you like, tell me that Christ was born on February 1st. I'm going to honor him anyways. Because what matters to me is not the day that has been set aside. What matters to me is that he was actually born. And we can start something in this church and say every November 3rd, the evidence church dedicated to celebrate Jesus' birth. Nobody can, nobody can arrest us for doing that. So it is, it is babyish, it is childish to begin to debate this season with people. But for we who understand what we are doing, it is a season of grace. It's a season of what? Hallelujah. Because we have a revelation. We have an acknowledgement of who the Lord is, who Christ is. But let me go. Uh, let, me, let me quickly say this before I go, rather. The greatest act of God is not that he even gave you a car and gave you cars and gave you businesses and gave you money. The greatest act of God, can I tell you, is that he gave you himself. So one of the major reasons why we are thanking God this morning, that's why I'm sorry, why we are praising God, why we are shouting hallelujah, is that, listen carefully, there's a new life I have. I have this life, and it's called the life of Jesus. And so why, when they ask you, why are you praising God? Why are you shouting hallelujah? Tell them, you've, you've been given a life. Glory to God. That is the greatest gift to humanity. That is what separates us. That is what distinguished us. That is the basis for our appreciation, for our hallelujah. 
The Bible actually says that if in this world we have only hope, we have all men most miserable. You know why? What transports us to eternity is not the fine car you just bought or you are about to buy or you are dreaming to buy. What transports us to eternity, can I tell you what it is? The life of Christ. Let me share a revelation with you. I don't have the time. You don't get into eternity just because you say Jesus is Lord. The Bible says no man hear the word of God. No man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of Christ is the life of Christ given. The Spirit of Christ is the life of Christ given. So in other words, once you have the Spirit of Christ in you, it is easier to accept Christ and receive his life. And out of the abundance of the reality of the Spirit of Christ, you lift your voice in acknowledgement from the deepest depth of your heart that he is Lord. That is what? He's Lord. Glory to God. And so if you don't have that life, you have not gotten eternity. If you don't have that life, you are yet to have something great to celebrate. Then you are still miserable. Praise God. So why am I praising and praising? Because I've escaped misery. Say it to yourself, say, I've escaped misery. That's why you are praising God. Look at what the Bible now says. Read that quickly. First Peter 2, verse 9 to 10. He says, but you are a chosen generation. Mark that word. Mark the word chosen. The word chosen means there are many, but you are selected. You are, so you are, not, you are different. <laughs> you are a chosen. I thought you were with me, guys. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation. It's so special, people. Can you see right there? That you may proclaim. That is why you are selected. The reason you were selected, the reason you were set aside, the reason Jesus came as a life to give you and I his own life so we can be a different species on the planet Earth is that we may proclaim, what is it? The praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Can I give you a revelation? When Jesus called you out of darkness, he didn't just call you by the voice or by the sound of his voice. That is a life in his voice that pulled you of the life you are living. You don't get the gist. I don't know about those who are really born again here, but let me give you my own testimony. When Jesus called me, there was no fabrication. That's why I always say that Christians about the counter. There was no fabrication. There was no effort inserted or exacted. I was not trying to make up or trying to do it. Struggling is not part of redemption. Where redemptive grace comes on somebody, there is something called injection of life that gives you a new life. So when he called you out, inside the voice or the sound of his voice is the life of God that pulled you out of smoking. And because I found his life, nobody is even talking to you, just stop smoking. Pulled you out of fornication and nobody is talking to you, you just stop it. Pull you out of a life of deceit and just stop it. You know why? Because inside the sound of his voice is the life of God. You guys are powerful guys here. He said, and the reason he called you, hear this, is that you may understand that you're the ultimate reason for your praise. He called you and separated you. Hope you are following what I'm sharing this morning. That is the ultimate. That's why at times I don't know about you. But at times I come to church and I don't know what to thank God for. I just look at my life. I said, God, if not that you gave me this life, where will I have been? People, I will, I will have been something else. I don't want to mention names on the stage. So nobody gets offended. But have you ever said, whoever you think is very wicked in this world, whoever is very wayward in this world, do you think that that person could have been you? The reason you are not any of the persons that people are talking about negatively is because the life of Christ has been given to you. That's why you are shouting hallelujah. And I share a mystery with you. Everything you are ever looking for is in that life. That's why the devil is shitting people. He doesn't want them to accept that life. Because he keeps telling them, if you have said this life, you will not be great. You will be small. It's just lies of the devil. It's just lies of the devil. You cannot have the life of Christ and not be phenomenally great and phenomenally awesome. I we together in the building. So he chose you. He said, look, look at the next statement. Look, 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 look at it. If you can help me, please. Verse 10. First Peter 2. I just read verse 9 that he called us and separated us. We are amazing. Look at verse 10. Look at our testimony. I'm going to the birth of Christ. Look at it. He said, who once were not a people, but are now what? Because he called us. 
and give us his own life. And with that life, we were nobody, but with his life now, we are now somebody. With that, without his life, we were no entity, we were nonsense, we were not to write home about, not to be identified with. We are, you may look handsome, but you are not resourceful. But the fear of God is that we had not obtained the mercy, but now the word is now. Can I hear now? The word now means then and after. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, then there was no mercy, but now I have obtained mercy. Let me explain this, unravel this to you. People will do wrong things. Yes, wrong things, and they will be punished for it. But listen carefully. Under this new life, even though you did the wrong thing, eh? but by the mercy of the Lord, you are crying right now. Say, God, I know that I should have been paying for what I did. That's why I said, hallelujah. Say, why you shout hallelujah? If you know what I did. If you know what I did. Either it was done ignorantly or intentionally, but you did. I understand that could be some in- unintentional acts that are wrong and very costly and very painful that could lead to internal regret or generational regret. But now that you have found the life of God, he said, then there was no mercy, but now you have found mercy. Say, I found mercy. Come and praise the Lord. So in other words, Jesus is our praise because he is our life. Pastor Paul, explain deeper before you drop the mic. I will do so. Look at John 10 verse 10. Because I really wanted to burst into thanksgiving when we are through right now, celebrating this life that was given to us. Hallelujah, Lord. John 10 verse 10, look at it. The devil came. Oh, guys. The thief does not come. Who is the thief right here? You guys know the word. The devil is the thief. He's not the owner. He's a thief. I love the way one guy interpreted it when an evangelist was preaching. He said, oh, Lele Shu, the devil is a stealer. You didn't get the gist. That is not the devil created. Show me one. So the Bible described him as what? So when your health is messing up, who is messing up with your, with your health? Who is that devil? Thief. Look and look at all the things. The, all the things the Bible described the devil with was he didn't create you. He didn't create your joy. He didn't create your peace. He didn't create your marriage. He did not create your life. He didn't create anything good about you. And so if you, if you see anything contrary to what God has created, thief is at work. That is his, his essential mission. Look at it, John 10 verse 10. That thief does not come except to what? Steal. Except to what? Kill. Except to what? Destroy. Three cardinal points of satanic activities. And people are going in, I mean, working in this world, things have been stolen from them. Their joy is stolen. Their destiny is stolen. Their husband is stolen. Their wife is stolen. Are you still in the building? Their children being stolen. The devil came to steal my sister, but God stopped them. Is that what I'm saying now? He came. Okay? Stealing it. And to kill. To destroy. But look at the next statement where we are here today. Why this season is so important to us. He said, look at it. But I have come. Underline, I have come. He said, Pastor Paul, where are you heading to? I went through that journey to bring you to this statement. I have come. Arranged, packaged by God. Organized, prophesied, foretold. And God denied Joseph not to touch Mary because I need to come in purity of biological procession. I need to come in purity and integrity without contamination. Yeah, through biological means so I can achieve one purpose. But I have come. But I have come. So he came. He was born. And was put in a manger. Very lowly experience. But I have come. Woo! I feel I'm the only one enjoying this revelation. Who is with me here? I have come. Why did I come? Why was I organized the way I was organized? Why was I allowed to go through the things that I went through? Why was God himself sacrificed that is wisdom? Because Christ is the wisdom of God. Why did God himself sacrifice his only begotten son? The reason he did so is to put a stop to the satanic agenda of stealing, of killing, and of destroying. But I have come that you may have what? Media. 
You may have what? And have that life? A dead being cannot give life. So if he comes as life, who is he? If he comes as life, sorry, if he comes to give life, who is he? So I have come, that what life is here. And I'm here not to give you a small measure. I am here to give you what? In abundance. I don't know why I'm speaking to you, but listen carefully. You are going to cross to 2023 with the abundance of God's life. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Glory to God. This is the reason why I'm shouting hallelujah. Because he came. He came. And that life simply means a stop to satanic agenda of killing and stealing and destroying. You can't have Jesus' life and the devil is still stealing from you. Oh, somebody's not in the building. You can't have Jesus' life and the devil is killing all your stuff. Thank you. You can't have life and the devil is still destroying. In other words, the coming of Christ as a baby in the manger is on an internal destiny mission to stop the harassment of the devil. So I thank God that he came. There are two seasons in our lives we must not joke it as a believer. The betting of Christ and the crucifixion of Christ. The betting came to release us. His crucifixion came to authenticate and validate and establish our salvation. So when he came, he came as hope. It came as life. Satan, announcement, and an end of an era. And I feel like closing now with that strong word. I will continue the next, maybe next service or Sunday or Christmas day. An end of what? Who can tell him the three eras? Jesus coming came to end. Oh, you guys are powerful. It's good to enjoy the world. An end of an era. The era of stealing. The era of what? And the era of what? So concerning you, there shall be no more steal, no more stealing. The devil shall have nothing to steal again. He will not steal your eyes. He will not steal any part of your body. He will not steal your steal your joy. He will not steal your marriage. He will not steal your fortune. I want to prophesy one that is very powerful. And if you're in the building, I need to say it very very strongly. I mean, respond very strongly. He will not steal your future. Do you know why you should be standing? That is nothing as dangerous as devil stealing one's future. Many are living my son, but their future has been stolen. Stolen. I don't know. I feel an anointing prophesying that statement. They are living, but in reality, their future has been stolen. They are still doing Janga, doing fine boy in town. They are still wearing black shade and black glasses. But in reality, their future has been stolen. So 10 years from now, you check them out. They are still where you met them last 10 years. At the 75 years old, they were still where you used to see them. Same clothes, same tie, same shoe, same look. Same work. Thank you, son. Same income. Same experience. Same everything. Same struggle, same addiction. Same everything. Same result. Same expression. But Jesus came to put an end to an error. And how did he come to do it? He didn't come to come and be battling with the devil. Ultimately, that was the eternity that he sorted that finally when he, when he went to hell. But when he came, he came as an exchange. He came to give us the ultimate alternative, the ultimate option, that this is what has been happening before he came. But life is here. And therefore, it takes stubbornness of heart and wrong loyalty to be addicted to sadness when joy has come. That was why, my dear please, if you are still with me, guys, if you read Isaiah chapter 9, do a name, want to preach with me? Remain standing, I need to close. Chapter 9 of Isaiah, just about what I just said right now. You see, when I preach about, in this kind of a season, I told this church, it comes in such a revelatory dimension. Look at chapter 9, oh my Jesus, Pastor Robert, what's going on? Chapter 9 of Isaiah, look at what it says. Jesus came to put an end to an era. You've got to tweet that for me, that is strong. An era of stealing, killing, and destroying. Chapter 9 of Isaiah, come on. Beginning from verse 1, 2. Look at it. No, no, follow me. Chapter 9. 
Chapter 9, nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon now. Who is distressed? Come and say amen to that. Amen. Because that was the existing era before he came. That was the, before Christ's birth. It was a reality. He said, right now, nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon now. Who is distressed? As when it first, it first, likely esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and after were more heavily oppressed than by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan and Galilee of Gentiles, I'm going to fast six. You're going to stay with me. The people, look at it, who walked in darkness have seen a great light. So nobody should argue. All have seen and come short of the glory of God. Our sin, all our righteousness, like a fiddle rag before him. It was a dispensation, brother Richard. Henry, it was a dispensation of gloominess, of, of darkness. The light shines and the darkness cannot comprehend. And that light is Christ's birth. It's the coming of Christ. The wise men, they, they saw the star, which is the light, and they had an awareness. It was not a Facebook notification. It was not an Instagram notification. It was not a TikTok or Twitter notification. It was the light that transcends seasons. It was light that transcends and said technological advancement and mediums. So when they saw the light, the star, something told them what we've been waiting for for decades and for ages. Yeah. 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 The people who walked in darkness, their finances in dark, their career in dark, those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them, a light is shined. Everybody is scared. Ebola is killing people. COVID-19 is killing people. HIV is killing people. Oppressions of all sorts is killing people. Terminal diseases are taking away lives. Death literally knocking at everybody's door before Christ came. He said, but look at it. Those who dwelt where? In the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. Three, four, five, six, on. You have multiplied the nation and increased his joy. The reason we are praising God, they rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. As men rejoice when they divide what? Why? Because what we have been waiting for. Look at the next statement. For you have broken the yoke of his body. And the staff of his, of, his, of his shoulder. The rod of his oppressor. As in the day of Midian. Christ's birth is not for internal gain. Only is for earthly liberation. Yeah. That is why we are celebrating his birth. We are shouting hallelujah. Look at four. Five rather. Look at five. Look at five. For every warrior son from the noisy battle. And garment rolled in blood. In blood will be used for burning the unfuel of fire. For so you can ask Pastor Paul, ah, and we do you a powerful preacher. She will tell her, so look at verse six. Look at verse six. The reason verse one, verse two, verse three, verse four, verse five. He said, Look at verse six. The reason that thing happened, those things happened, is there for unto us. A child is born. Is any date put there? No, sir. 25th of December. If you are still arguing with anybody, you are not part of this house. You don't, you don't know Revelation. He said, for unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government will build upon his throne. And his name. Because before he came, it was darkness. Before he came, it was ugliness. Now that he came, he came with new life. He, and that life carries names. His names have been called what? Cancel Lord, no more confusion. Mighty God doing mighty stuff. Everlasting Father, no short time testimonies. Prince of peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Come on, give me verse 7, verse 8. Prince of peace, verse 7 now. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and, and over his kingdom to order it and establish with judgment. And justice from that time forward and ever. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. So what performs? Ah, oh, you guys are too much for me this morning. You know what I'm talking about. What performs? Everything that Christ came to offer. So he came to offer his life. And what performs as you embrace that life? Is the seal of the Lord of hosts. Every time you celebrate the coming of Christ. And you truly have it. 
truly have it inside of you. You are living a life of total emancipation. And neighbor said, David, don't be angry with my husband. As his name is, so is he. Let nobody get unnecessarily proud. As a man thinking in his heart. Your name was given out of thoughts. Your name forms your mindset. So if Jesus is called wonderful, he is wonderful. If his name is called counselor, he offers counsel. Gives direction, no confusion. If he's an everlasting father, he drives you and takes you to where he is. God is not limited to your earthly journey. He gives you long life on the earth and in your due season, due age. He gives you a, a successful transition and causes you to stay with him. And Jesus still did the same anyway. When he was on the earth, what did he do? He paid the ultimate price. He went to the cross of Calvary. He died and rose on the third day. He finished the entire course. And right now, he's seated with the Father in his right place. And where he is, is where you are. Because it's in you, you are seated with him. Why will you praise God and shout hallelujah all the, day, all, all the way? Because the life was given. Hey, listen, this life was given to you when you are not even asking for it. You didn't ask for it. You wanted to live your life and do stuff. I thought not everybody liked poverty until I met some people. Let me just rubbish some stuff out here. Do you know that some people, they love poverty? Say, Pastor Paul, for me, I'm telling the truth. Some people, they, they don't mind to be poor. And some doesn't even mind to live a life of average. But Jesus came and said, that is not part of my package. You can't have my life and be poor. He said, I have come. I have what? To do what? Give you life. Mm-hmm. And give you what more? Look at the two words. Two, two words more. More is already more. Then upon that again. Abundance is already more. <laughs> Are you catching this thing? More, more. Everything is popo. It's just more. Your joy is what? More abundantly. Your direction is what? See the way I'm talking like a drunkard this morning. I'm just drunk because the life of God is too much. If you have this life, you are drunk in it. Hey, this life that I have. Is the life of Christ in me. This life. My sons are still waiting for me to call them. I'm done with my teaching. This life. That I have is the life of Christ in me. Are you sure? This life. This life. That I have ah. is the life. This life. This life. That I have. Is the life. I, I have two minutes of this life. I will pray to God myself. This life. This life. That we have. Is the life of God. This life. That I have. Is the life. This life. That I am, that I am, is the life, is the life of Christ in me. This life, this life that I am, that I am, is the life, is the life of God. This joy, this joy oh, that, that I am, that I am, is the joy. in your body to drop if you have any expectations go with me them do me a favor just call all the names of christ you can remember this love that i have this wonder that i have this cancer that i have this peace that i have is what i'm saying now just we have two minutes to do this and i close so that they can do a few things and we close the service paul are you ready come on what's going on here let's go it's like that I am. It's That we are is the light. 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 Is the
I want to beg you. If you're in the service, see, I'm seeing people from all over the world online. Worry everywhere, they're online. Look up here. Look up here. Most times, we're coming to the pool of revelation and we are still asking for help. The man at the pool of Bethsaida was there for many years. 38 years. He said, nobody to help me. Because he was confused. Or maybe he's even religious like many of us here. He said, Pastor Paul, lay hand on me. You don't wait for the hand laying. That's a stealing already here. As you say, see, don't go back home fighting your husband. Just shout here, yeah, this peace. By the time you go back home, he looks at you and says, my wife. <laughs> Joseph fought Mary here. Yeah. He said, they don't give you outside. <laughs> but the angel came, came behind him. Joseph. <laughs> How many generations of Christ's life do I have in the building this morning? I, I want this place to be explosive everywhere. 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 That is why Paul, the greatest testimony is life. Is what? That you are alive. Before I leave today again, I will celebrate another son of mine. Yes, today that was, was his birthday. Ah. It's your birthday. Birthday Paul. The temple. We should be eating cake every day. Yes, sir. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are we ready? Yes, sir. If I don't see you shouting, I will come to your direction. Come here. And I will go to the altar. You must not live here and you are sad. No, These children that I have. They are children. The one, the, one, the one that will not be smart in your mouth, don't mention them. I just want what is smart and powerful. <laughs> says, this death cancellation that I have, no, something that will be very powerful. Don't worry, it covers everything. The one life alone covers all. I just, you, you, are, you are in front of speakers. You guys are matured, if you understand. Are we together? Usher, nobody must move. Some people... When God is moving, they are also moving. <laughs> when they be positioned, God is touching your business, touching your career, touching your life, touching your diseases, touching your sickness, touching your children. Are we ready? Explosive moment. Let's go. You are you are alive.
house and we are closing on that note. I mean, my section. Go and tell them this life that I have is the life of Christ. Leave, leave your seat. Go to the left, right, front, and back and shout it and testify about it. Come on. That I am. He's the power of Christ in me. He's the life of Christ. That I am. achievement rest upon your life Amen. you will not throw in the towel Amen. what you start you shall finish Amen. the finishing anointing rest on you Amen. you will finish where Amen. you shall finish strong Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. between now and the end of this year your testimony shall be loud Amen. you shall be consulted Amen. you will make headline news God will rededicate me to be dedicated to you. Amen. You didn't hear that one. I will say it again. Because I won that one very well. I said God will rededicate me to be dedicated to you. Amen. God will refire up me to be on fire for you. Amen. God will raise me to be your helper in your rising. Amen. To be your helpers in your rising. Amen. In 
the name of Jesus. You shall not be tired. You will not stop loving God. You will make heaven. Your soul has escaped air. You will not live entirely in a fire. You will spend your entirety with Christ. It is well with you. By this time, December next year, all eyes open, look at me. You shall be a million times your current size. That is the anointing we are entering next year with. Unusual speed. Everything that has always this, you have always desired to achieve. Before the first quarter of next year, you have come to all of them. Your legs are empowered for speed. A little one among God shall become a thousand. And a small among us shall become a mighty nation. In the name of the Lord. The Lord shall esteem it in his own time. A new dispensation is upon you. Dispensation of life. A new era. A new age. A new season. An end to the old era of stealing, killing, and destroying. A new era of joy, life, peace, wonders in abundance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a prayer. I put my faith in Jesus. You don't want to go home, right? My anchor to I still have like his hands. Come on. My hope and firm foundation. You never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus. My anchor to God. 